So this video is going to deal very briefly with some of the export options that are available from Keynote. Now, first I'd like to say that using Keynote, using PowerPoint, using Prezi, using Google Slides, really use whichever one you're most comfortable with using. There's not a big, um, big difference between them. Um, what you should aim to do though is keep your presentation kind of simple and straightforward. Uh, here I have a uh, presentation open that was, that's already been created because we're dealing with um, export options. It seems that it seemed like a good idea to just start with some that one that was already there. But I just want to point out that if you go to File New, you can also access the window that will automatically appear every time you open Keynote. There are a bunch of templates here that you can draw on. Uh, the improv one is the one used for this particular presentation. Uh, I'm going to say in general, uh, you want to keep it simple. Uh, keep your text large, keep the uh, contrast between the, the text and the background, keep it uh, strong, keep everything crisp. Uh, the goal is to present content, whether it's text or images, in a way that communicates your ideas. Um, often an image might be better at doing that than, um, than text. Uh, if you're using text, keep it limited. Um, don't have too, too much text per page. And I do want to add that the PDFs that I post online are not a good example of uh, a good presentation style. They are designed not necessarily with a, a presentation in mind, but they're designed so that you can turn to those and use those when you're going in and actually uh, working with the software. Uh, here, I just want to point out one more thing before we leave this window. You'll notice there is a standard and a widescreen option available here. Um, I'm going to say the standard is usually safest if you don't know where it's going to be played. Um, most projectors these days do widescreen, uh, but if you happen to uh, luck out and get a really old projector for your presentation, it might only do uh, a 4-3 aspect ratio. This will just put black bars, bars on either side, and if nothing else, it just kind of focuses uh, your attention on the center center slide. If you're doing widescreen, widescreen is great. Of what you're putting into your presentation, you're going to export as something other than a PDF or a keynote file or a PowerPoint when you're done. Uh, so if you're doing a video, um, start with widescreen, and then uh, you'll be able to export it as a 720p or a 1080p file without any issue when you're done. What I do warn against though is going in and changing the aspect ratio after you already have content added. Um, if you've moved things around from the default formatting at all, and I do mean at all, or added anything extra like images that weren't part of the original layout, then going in and changing from uh, 69 to 43, or from, or the other way around, it's going to really mess with your content and overlap it. And I do want to point out that if you export to a PowerPoint file, which is totally an option, uh, you should always check and make sure that uh, everything looks the same because often it doesn't. The content will be all there, but it might be something where you have to go in and just rearrange the text and images a little bit. Uh, here, uh, one more thing we'll talk about in terms of just slide basics. Uh, you notice if you go to document here, you get the basic document settings. Uh, you can see here that the slide size is um, it's 4.3. So 4.3 or 16.9, the two basic settings. Uh, I want to point out that there is also a custom slide size setting here. And if you click on that, uh, that is going to allow you from the get-go to create it at a size that is going to be ideal for exporting it as a video. And I mention this because one, uh, one of the reasons 
other than giving a digital presentation, that you might want to export a keynote as a video is that it is a very kind of quick, easy, and high quality way of your incorporating uh, bar charts or pie charts or like an animated graph into a presentation. Keynote will generate it for you, and if you want to use it in a video afterwards, export it as a video, uh, and then you can turn around and import it into your own project later on. So if you're doing that, then you might as well just set it up for um, the uh, whatever size you're using from the, from the start. Now here again, uh, just to go over a couple of things, so if you check the handout online, uh, I go through the, uh, the document settings here. Um, some of them are really basic. Now, again, um, I'm, I'm advising if you're not sure what you're going to be presenting on to export your, um, your presentation as a PDF. That way there will all be, always be something that will open it, whether it's on your computer or someone else's. Even a web browser will open a PDF, so it's a really safe file to use. And uh, in addition, a PDF um, doesn't matter if the font is actually installed on the computer or not. It will always look the same. And that isn't true for PowerPoints, and it's not true for Keynotes. And with Keynote, you, you run into the whole Mac PC issue. There's no backwards compatibility, and it's the same with PowerPoint. Backwards compatibility is a big issue. And if the, the same font isn't installed on that computer, that was installed on uh, the computer you created it, then it's not going to look exactly the same. Okay, so document settings here. Again, none of these settings except the slide size are really going to um, impact you if you're exporting as a PDF. Uh, there's just one thing I want to point out here. So um, I mentioned uh, earlier that this is a preset, um, pre-done presentation. And I just want to have a look briefly at the presenter window. So when you go to play a slideshow, um, you're going to see uh, this. And here I can switch windows back and forth. So this is what people see on the screen, and this is what the presenter sees. So you get to see the slide coming up. And um, also, if you have it set up properly, you can also see presenter's notes. Now, in this case, I'm not seeing the um, presenter notes. Click up here on this little box and turn that on. You can also turn on timer. And you also have the option of going in and customizing presenter display here as well. So if you turn on the timer, uh, this can actually be great if you know you have a very specific amount of time to give a presentation. You've got the timer there. They can't see it on the other screen, but it really helps you keep track of where you are and how much time you have. Often you might go through something too quickly. Um, having the timer up there is just like a constant reminder that Either you have loads of time left and you can slow down, or um, you don't have that much time left and you need to really get your content, your most important content, out before uh, your time limit is reached. Now, again, here, um, down at the bottom, this is a great place. This is these are the presenter notes, and this is a great place to put notes to yourself. Now, um, there's actually Creating PowerPoints and other slide types is actually an occupation. And you might have someone create a PowerPoint who's not actually going to give it. And this is actually what happened here. So these presenter notes are designed for the person who is going to give the presentation, just a reminder of the points they have to follow. And um, they're going to be different for each, each slide. So um, very nice in terms of keeping you on track and knowing what the uh, presentation is. But I do want to emphasize that it's much better to, um, you know, if you practice it ahead of time. I mean, there's nothing worse than going into a presentation situation cold where you're, um, you know, you're not that comfortable with the material. 
and you have to rely too much on presenter's notes. Ideally, um, anything that is in a slide is just going to be a reminder of what you want to talk about. Or if it's an image, it's going to just be kind of a visual illustration of what you're talking about. So uh, just again, this is where you go in to change the presenter display. And when you're giving a presentation, it's really nice. Um, now, of course, if you export as a PDF, you don't have these options. Uh, so, you know, if you really like the, having the whole presenter display, what I would recommend is taking a keynote copy or PowerPoint copy because PowerPoint has a very similar setup to keynote as far as this goes. And only using the PDF if necessary. And that way you have options. If you want to do something with the that has all these little extra aids, you can. And if you want to use the PDF, you have that option as well. Okay, so we're back to the main, um, main window. Uh, again, when you're adding a text or going in and adjusting text, you would click on the text box and go in here and make changes. This isn't really about how to use Keynote so much as it is about how to export. So what I'm really going to concentrate on is going over the export options. Uh, but one other thing I will mention, you can also add movies, you can add audio, and in a moment we will look at how you can also go in and record your uh, narration to go with your slideshow, which uh, could be done, you know, you could do it uh, if someone has Keynote, you're very com comfortable with that knowledge, you know they're going to be able to watch it in Keynote. You could record um, the slideshow with your voiceover. Uh, and the slide timing, and you could send them the keynote. Or uh, if you want to be really safe about format, you could do that, and then rather than sending them a keynote or PowerPoint file, you could export it as a movie file, put it on YouTube, you know, you can make it private, you can make it unlisted, and send them the URL. And then um, you know that they're going to be able to watch it. And the uh, quality of the export is going to keep the, the text nice and crisp, so it'll be a good quality presentation on export. Now again, let's just uh, look at, well, let's start off with the record options. So to just play it, you would play it from within using the, the play button here. Of what you want to do is record your slideshow. You know, record it so that either for timing or for voiceover and timing, you have that incorporated into the slideshow. You actually go to play and then record slideshow. Now here I get the presenters window again, but the difference is down here at the bottom, there's a red record button. And I can see over here, um, I've got a, a little levels thing going on here and also a mic button. So if I want to mute that, uh, so that I'm not actually recording audio at the same time, I can do that as well. So if I'm doing the uh, voiceover, again, I would just click here, start recording audio, and it's going to go through the countdown. And once it's done, um, I'm recording the voiceover that goes with it. Uh, when I go from one slide to the next, the time I spend on each slide, as well as the audio narration, are linked together. So I'm getting, um, I'm getting both at the same time. Now here, um, I'm just doing this as an example, so I'm not going to go through the entire slideshow. And obviously, I'm not giving the narration that I would be if I were actually going in and, and giving this presentation rather than just giving an example of how to record uh, a slideshow. So here, when I'm done, uh, just click on the record button again stops recording, close it, and now when I go back to Keynote, part of what is going to be saved with the file, if I save this file, what I have also saved is the play is the recording. So you can see under here it says um, play slideshow, but the second option is play recorded slideshow. And if I go back to document, again, if what you're using is the Keynote file, then you know, you could set it to automatically play upon open. 
Uh, you could send, set it to self-playing if that's what's happening here. But um, again, it, it's really it's really better if you're recording um, a presentation that you send it in a really universal format, which is the, uh, the video format. So here I've got a recorded slideshow. If I want to get rid of it, just clear recording here.